What's going on guys, it's Mr. Investalot here, bang bang, we're talking about Beam Global today. Alright, so as you guys all know, the Beam stock drops all the way down to the 30s today. It was up as high as 36 uh, just yesterday. And if we look at a 5 day chart here, we can see it was up to 36. And today it's dropped all the way down to in the 30s, 31 hovering. So what could be the reason for this droppity drop? So today we're going to be talking about share dilution. We're also going to be talking about our beloved San Diego teaming up with Beam Global to offer free EV charging. And we're going to get down and dirty with insider trading. Peter, you've been a naughty boy. And institutional ownerships. Oh yeah. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor and this is for entertainment purposes only. Do your own research before you make any investments. So what in hell happened today? Why is Beam Global down 11%? Oh god, they were up as much as $35 yesterday and there was a deal that has been priced in offering a significant discount at $30 a share. So what does this mean? This means that Beam Global has agreed to sell 250,000 shares at $30 per share. And the reason being is they want to raise gross proceeds of $7.5 million. And this, you know, it's not uncommon for companies to do this. They just want to raise some fresh capital. Okay, so what does this mean? Basically, the company had just over 7 million shares outstanding as of November 9. So now there's 250,000 new shares. It represents just a 3.6% dilution. So people automatically think of bad news when they see, you know, stock and share dilution. The dilution here only represents 3.6%, but if they're raising these funds and they're going to spend it in a very productive way to like scale up and get more partnerships, more contracts, it may actually be beneficial in the long run. So apart from Tesla, most energy and electric vehicles took a big hit today. That's including NEO stock, SBE also known as ChargePoint. Tesla's the only one running with its hair blowing in the wind. So even Blink charging and Xpeng both lost 10% today. Some good news that's popping out is the tag team of San Diego and Beam Global teaming up to offer free EV charging at ad sponsored stations. Oh, in the city, the city of San Diego. So here we got some juicy numbers here for you. They're gonna be installing 50 off-grid electric vehicle charging stations, which will be available to the public free of charge. Yes, you read it right and you read it here, free of charge. So that is delicious. So what they're doing is they're really making their way to actually obtaining as much land as possible. They're getting their infrastructure in there. They want to eat up this market. If you didn't know, they got their factory and headquarters in the city as well. So it makes it even easier for them to install these up. So you were talking about the GSA contract, you know, we're talking about partnerships and this is just the beginning. So imagine Beam wants to extend this all across the country. So when rolling out these kind of EV Arc 2020 models, this free model depends on the corporate sponsor. So they're hoping the corporate sponsor is going to cover the overhead of these charging stations in exchange for naming rights and brand placement. So if Beam can make this model work right here in the city of San Diego, he said they can make it work anywhere. So he goes on to speak about the relative ease of how you can store them. You know, you can choose any site. What's really exciting is these kind of fleets of electrification that's coming to government fleets around the whole of the USA, but also each city and each state is working towards lowering their emissions. So they all have these kind of climate action plans and they're really trying to drive down the emissions. So here's a big clue here. It says that greenhouse gas emissions, they want to cut in half and they want to make the city's grid 100% renewable by 2035. I think they're going to be installing these like hotcakes, baby, literally. They're saying that they don't want to, you know, um, put an additional burden on the grids. So obviously these are off grid energy supplies and energy sources directly from the sun. And they're going to help with infrastructure. Literally, people can just park up and get free electrical charging for their vehicles. Beam has also said that as soon as they've done this, they want to take it overseas and they want to repeat it internationally. Oh baby, so moving on, we want to talk about insider trading. So I looked on Fintel. We're looking at a Mr. Peter Warner Davidson. So who is this guy selling a whole load of shares? His name is Peter Warner Davidson. He's been awarded shares as you can see over the last few years. So as of November, we've seen him selling some shares. We've got 14,842 here, 142 here, a random 16 down here, 
and then 5,000 shares up here. So collectively he sold near enough around 20,000 shares, but he still holds 58,000 shares here. And if we look to see who is this actual Peter Warren Davidson guy, what is his role in the company? So when looking up Beam Global and taking a look at his team, I wanted to find out who the hell this guy is. So as we can see the board of directors here, we're talking about man like Desmond, who is the chairman, president and chief executive officer. We've got independent director Anthony and aha, ha, we got Peter over here, another independent director. So I wanted to do my homework on this dude. Who is this guy? So we took a clickety click and we found his Twitter. So when you search this guy up, you find out he actually worked with the Department of Energy. So he's a former executive director of the Loans Programs Office. So here at the US Department of Energy. So this man holds a lot of weight. He's an executive director of the Loans Program. So he can choose who he wants to give these loans to. Government loans, government money. So Mr. Davidson oversaw the programs more than $30 billion portfolio of clean energy and advanced vehicle loans and loan guarantees. This is the largest project finance organization in the US government. So if we go back to his Twitter and we take a look at his Alliance Climate Capital. So what he does is asset management and uh, he's focusing on like renewables, on EV, on green, clean alternatives. He wants to focus on climate solutions. So he's taking a point now at looking at how big the kind of market is. And if this man is managing, you know, climate portfolios and people's money, he can choose exactly where he wants to invest that money. They've already invested over $32 billion into clean energy investments. So why is the geezer selling? I'm not sure. Maybe he just needed to take a bonus. I don't know. Often directors have to take their money in the form of shares. So when they sell the shares, it's just them taking their salary, really. So being a former executive director of the loans program office, he probably has a lot of friends, you know, around the place there. So when he's pitching for these government contracts and government loans, he probably has a lot of weight in his wording. So I was looking through his Twitter and I found this retweet from Peter Davidson. He said, oh, gosh, take a look over here. So Tesla got a big boost from a Department of Energy loan back in 2010. Now the folks who approved that loan have some advice for Congress. Wow though, wow, look at where Tesla is now and they got a big loan back in 2010. Don't look now, reporting on a successful government program. And now we want to take a look at institutional ownership and shareholders. We want to see who is holding this stock. So if we take a clickety click and we look down here, we're going to see that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of companies that are currently invested and have recently invested just in November. So we've got the Vanguard Group with 216,000 shares. We've got the Royal Bank of Canada with 9,800 shares. We've got loads of these companies. Morgan Stanley's up in here with 11,000 shares. So everyone seems to be taking, you know, an initial dip in the water. Some people more heavily than others. We've got BlackRock in here as well. And below it, there's also Wells Fargo, there's Blackstone, there's so many different. We've got JP Morgan and some people exiting 100% out. But as you can see, the reds here represent people selling and the greens represent new positions. See, there's a whole load of green here. This is all November, as you can see. There's October, but there's a lot in November where people are just buying, buying, buying. Why is this important? This is always a good sign, you know, it's a good indicator because they often have information that we don't have. It shouldn't be that way, but sometimes it is. Most companies are opening relatively small positions. They're not loading a boat yet. Institutions can always be wrong as well. So make sure you do your own research before you invest in any stock. So I'm still extremely bullish on this company and I'm gonna show you the reason why. It's everything to do with the GSA, federal government contract. But I was looking deeper into the contract as well. So here we were talking about San Diego. We were talking about the numbers, right? Oh yeah, we were talking about Diego City earlier today. We were talking about 50 EV arcs gonna be installed there to test run so the public can have free charging, you know? They're getting that infrastructure in there early. So when we were looking back through this GSA mass contract, we wanted to see some numbers and figures. But all I found was item numbers, really. So it's just product description numbers. But then when we delve deeper and actually look at some of the, the words in here. So the Beam EV Arc units are available with both Charge Point and Juice Box. They're also able to be purchased by state and local governments in case of disaster purchasing. And the biggest thing here which interested me was the US government operates the largest fleet in the world 
with more than 640,000 vehicles. This is key, you know, and as these fleets get electrified, you know, with the USPS contract coming in as well, all of these people, there's going to be a massive demand in EV charging infrastructure. This is going to be needed because you've now electrified all these fleets. How can you catch up with, you know, infrastructure? How can we charge our vehicles up? And so when we're looking at infrastructure, we're looking at, you know, when is this actually going to change? When are they going to be able to install this? So they're going to be looking to rapidly install this. It's valid through the 31st of October 2025. And there's exercise options to continue to buy until 2040. So they're really just waiting for Biden to come into office, you know, sign some papers, release the kind of money for infrastructure and for all of the states to be able to start, you know, building this electrical EV infrastructure all across their states. Also, what's really interesting is they can now purchase it, you know, federal government agencies, state and local governments, educational institutions and others can easily purchase the fastest deployed EV charging infrastructure. And if we're looking at who's actually using it now, there's five federally funded national laboratories using it and also the US Navy. So they think it's much easier to sell to these kinds of people. Right now, they're getting orders from them and new orders for other federal government agencies as a result of this contract vehicle being in place. Overall, I'm going to be holding on to this stock. I'm going to continue to average down and buy more shares as it goes. And really what we're waiting for is just Biden. I want to see what Biden's going to do when he signs this electrical infrastructure. I want to see what laws and regulations are going to come in place in certain states and um, how serious they are about, you know, the transition um, to solar energy, to EV, to electrical infrastructure. I want to see what's going to happen with this stock in the future. So, yeah, I'm going to hold on to it and um, make sure you do your own research before you buy any of these stocks and also consult a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't just buy a stock because I get excited about it. This is only entertainment. Mr. Investalot, over and out.